Welcome back to the Red Battle League Rundown, where we dissect each battle in the week and go over the current rankings. I'd like to thank Cap for helping out. I was feeling sick, so it was great for him to jump in and deliver last week's rundown. That being said, I'm feeling a lot better, so let's get right to it. Starting this week, we have the New York Kecleons versus the Chicago Bear Arctics. The Kecleons get some quick initiative as they're able to Volt Switch on turn 1 and get the matchup against Umbreon. Noivern U-turns out for Nidoqueen to absorb a Toxic and set up a layer of Toxic Spikes. The Kecleon switch into Blastoise to take an incoming Draco Meter. They're able to survive two hits and retaliate with Dragon Pulse, but get KO'd on the following turn. Kingdra is low enough for Infernape to come in and score a KO with the critical U-turn. Toxic Spikes begin to rack up as Ambipump, Umbreon, and Floor just get poison. Making an amazing prediction, Mew is able to knock out Umbreon with a super effective Drain Punch. The Kecleons continue to apply pressure as Nidoqueen is able to knock out Florges and Ambipom. Following that, Mega Aerodactyl pops out and is able to nab an easy KO against a weakened Nidoqueen. Word and Wash unfortunately misses too many Hydro Pumps and allows Mega Aerodactyl to take another knockout, though it gets badly damaged in the process. Infernape picks off Mega Aerodactyl only for Gengar to come in and outspeed and take down the Infernape. The match ends with Mew landing a Zan Headbutt against Gengar. The Kecleons are getting better each week. U-Turn and Volt Switch combined with Toxic Spice added so much pressure to their opponent as they were forcing switches and then making them pay for said switches. Moreover, the Kecleons were able to get some serious chip damage off the Bear Arctic's walls. On top of all that, the prep and predictions were on point as they were able to carry the momentum of the match. The Bear Arctic's were constantly on their heels this week. They couldn't get the matchup they wanted to, and it might have been a result of the way they constructed their team. Toxic Spikes did way too much damage, and they had little to no support to turn the match around. Overall, the Bear Arctics played too safe, and it resulted in the Kecleons earning their first 2-0 victory. Next on our list, we have the Oakland Typhlosions leading with Snorlax and the Minneapolis Mamoswines with Cobalion. Cobalion sets up rocks as the Typhlosions switch into Slowbro. In response to Slowbro, Cobalion Volt switches into Tangrowth, who goes on to knock off Snorlax's Assault Vest. Mega Charizard burns Landris with Will-O-Wisp, which provides a safer switch for Cobalion to come in and knock out Landris with Hinamahara Ice. Next, Mega Alakazam comes in and traces the Tangrowth's regenerator ability and knocks out Tangrowth with Shadow Ball. After that, Ridiculous comes in and sets up Trick Room and proceeds to knock out Snorlax, Slowbro, Chinchino, Mega Alakazam, and Hitmonlee. The Mammoth Ones had a very calculated match this week. They essentially crippled their opponent enough for Ridiculous to come in, set up a Trick Room, and sweep. That being said, the Mammoth Ones made some notable predictions too. They were able to keep up with the Trick Room momentum by predicting Chinchino to switch on behalf of Mega Alakazam, and so they opted for Psyshock instead of Shadow Ball. The Typhlosions made a few off predictions that allowed Slowbro to take a lot of unnecessary damage, and moreover, let the Mammoth Swines enact their plan. Things kept getting worse as both their offensive and defensive Pokemon were having trouble doing their jobs. In the end, the Mammoth Swines were able to take advantage of the situation and get a 5-0 victory. The Toronto Chestnuts get the upper hand on the Tacoma Tyranitars as they're able to U-turn on the switch. Al pops in Nidoking and throws the Thunderbolt to KO the Tyranitar Sigilyph. Following that, Misha knocks off Nidoking's Life Warp, but takes a critical Sludge Wave and goes down on one hit. The Tyranitars get a chance to set up spikes and are then able to knock out Nidoking though they become an easy target for Talonflame to knock out Registeel. The Chestnuts do enough chip damage for Rotomo to get a KO by Volt Switching on Skarmory, and then follow up with Lantern taking down Raikou. The Chestnuts let Lantern go down to make a Sharpedo, and then bring the hit on top to get the knockout and the win. Lantern really stood out in this match as the MVP. Lantern enabled the Chestnuts to get the switch initiative and the matchup to apply pressure against their opponent. Moreover, Nidoking and his diverse move pool allowed the Chestnuts to hit whatever the Tyranitars could throw at them, though they were able to get an important crit along the way. The Tyranitars unfortunately took a lot of damage due to their opponent's wall breakers doing what they do best. They managed to set up spikes fairly early in the match, but overall, it didn't play to their benefit. However, the Tyranitars didn't exactly have the best start, losing Siglyph and then Xiao really put them at a disadvantage. Ultimately, it's hard to identify what the Tyranitars' win condition was, and the lack of having one meant that their team was fighting an uphill battle from the start. The Chestnuts emerged victorious with a 4-0 win. This next match will be the Pittsburgh Steelers vs. Colorado Avlogs. This game goes back and forth to start. The Steelers set up some sand, but ultimately lose Toxicroak after it's unable to knock out Thunderous. Dragon lands two critical Dragon Claws to knock out Clado, but gets poisoned in the process. Following that, Mega Pinsar pops in to revenge kill Dredigan. Donphan misses an important Stone Edge against Honchkrow, and in a last ditch effort, they set up some rocks. Honchkrow sets up a substitute and is easily able to knock out Celebi. Not too long after, Honchkrow takes down Tyranitar, but then succumbs to Keldeo. Dragon goes one on one with Keldeo and is able to secure the win by knocking out both Keldeo and Donphan. This match, the Steelers worked too hard in trying to get the perfect matchup. They were slowly racking up residual damage and needed to make a play happen. However, that costed them Toxic Crook as they were slowly losing momentum and kept playing it safe. Donphan was an excellent Pokemon to bring in this match, but since it was such a necessity, those of the Steelers go to switch in and end up taking too much damage but could not do enough damage in return. Meanwhile, the Avalox brought in a team that benefited from U-turning. Although there was no huge standout predictions, they also just brought in the right team and let the Steelers pay for any mistakes they made. For example, it allowed the Avalox an easy KO on Celebi and let them walk away with a 4-0 victory. 
The next match we have are the Kentucky Crowbats leading with Selgor versus the Toronto Star Raptors who lead with Bravery. After a sequence of switches, Chestnut pops up and sets up a layer of spikes on the incoming Selgor. Milotic once again takes a return from Bravery, only for Bravery to withdraw into Porygon 2 in which Milotic recovers up. Mega Venusaur goes for the Sludge Bomb in which Chestnut can negate and manages to stack up another layer of spikes, but takes a hidden power of fire. Porygon 2 comes in but gets poisoned by the Sludge Bomb and shortly after Bravery gets put to sleep. Excadrill then threatens Porygon 2 out into Chestnut which ultimately falls to Aerial Ace. The trio then KOs Excadrill and Excelgor, who only sets up a layer of spikes. Milotic KOs the trio with Ice Beam, Porygon 2 then gets sacked due to the hazards on the field which allows Mega Alteria to heal Bell but gets knocked out by Mega Venusaur. Bravery then knocks out Kangaskhan with Bravery but falls to Jolteon's hidden power. Thunderous then takes down Jolteon and Milotic but Mega Venusaur lives on a sliver of health and takes down the Thunderous. This is probably one of the closest matches we've had this week, but also maybe one of the most painful ones as well. Both teams brought in amazing sets, were on the right counters and the right type of support for each other's teams. The Star Raptors had a few opportunities where they could have turned this match around, but didn't. The biggest one that stands out to me is not setting up another layer of hazards, as we saw how much that could have mattered in the end. Moreover, the Star Raptors made too many over predictions that allowed the Crobats to gain back traction. That being said, the Crobats were holding their own. While another layer of spikes would have killed them in the end, the current amount wasn't applying a lot of pressure to the team they brought. They prepped well for this match and brought the appropriate counters that could have walled a lot of their big hitters. In the end, the Crobats win the match with a close 1-0 victory. The Golden State War Turtles play a tricky game against the San Francisco Giraffe Rigs as Rotom Heat switches items with Milk Tank. Rotom gets leftovers while Milk Tank gets a choice scarf. Rocks are set up by both teams, thanks to Fortress and Crocodile. The Giraffe Rigs score the first KO of the match as Rotom Heat goes down to an Ice Punch. Fortress goes for a rapid spin to clear the rocks, but loses Milk Tank to Sylveon. Fortress returns to set up a layer of spikes, but the War Turtles are able to punch back by knocking out Sock. Out pops a Bikini, and they throw two Searing Shots to knock out Sleeping Crocodile. Embor hits Bikini with a Sucker Punch, but the Cold Bear Berry is enough to keep Bikini healthy enough to use Psy Shock and score another KO. Bikini also knocks out Roserade before being KO'd by Scizor. Mega Skeptile comes in and uses Hidden Power to knock out Scizor and score a win for the Draft Rigs. This match really could have gone either way. But there's a few key plays that gave the draft rigs the edge. Both teams were doing a good job getting knockouts and slowly whittling each other down. But ultimately, the Colbert Berry on Victini helped the draft rigs take out two of the biggest threats on the War Turtles team, that being Roserade and Embor. Lastly, the layer of hazards added some greatly appreciated extra damage. The War Turtles brought in some unique sets this week, especially the Sleep Talk Crocodile. Moreover, they brought in a lot of support to keep them going toe to toe with the draft rigs, such as Wish Support and Rock Support. However, not being able to get rid of Hazard slowly began to take a toll on their team. In the end, it was an even match, but the draft rigs were able to pull through with a 3 0 win. Alright, here we go. This one was a long one as we have the Flint Tropius vs. the Minnesota Eon Twins. Tornadus prevents the rocks from going up with Taunt and forces the switch to Mega Aggron. However, shortly after missing a Focus Blast, it results in its untimely KO by a Heavy Slam. After that, a series of events happen in which results in Napoleon getting paralyzed and Uxie losing its leftovers by a knockoff from Kinkelder. Latias is then able to set up a substitute and a Calm Mind against Uxie, but Uxie is able to fade the sub away with a U-turn and switch into Ditto which transforms into Latias and takes it down with Dragon Pulse. Down the road, Garchomp gets burned by the Gorgice and takes a heavy hit from Conkelder's Dream Punch. Garchomp finally succumbs from its burns and goes down. Togekiss and Empoleon square off in which Empoleon comes out as the victor, but Substrika comes in and finishes Empoleon off. Next, Gyarados gets paralyzed from Uxie, but is able to knock it out with Crunch. The final sequence of events was Ditto vs Gorgias, which resulted in the timer to run out. Well, alright. This was a bit hard to judge as it ended in a draw, but both teams were definitely ready for a long match. The Tropiuses were prepared to deal statuses while cure themselves of anything that would come their way. On the other hand, the Eon Twins were prepared to play more risky. They went toe to toe with Togekiss fully knowing what it's capable of, but knew that getting rid of it would make their life easier. The Tropiuses, however, were able to utilize Ditto amazingly, but in the end led to a stalemate of 3-3. Finally, we have the Baltimore Ravios versus the Bavarian Beedrills, and this one is nothing short of Burns and Paris, as we have the Guard of War and the Electros opening this battle. Soon after, the statuses come into play. Mega Sap by Burns and Pharos with Will Wisp, Chansey paralyzes Latios, but the Lum reads it by its status. Meanwhile, Sapblade is then paralyzed from Ampharos' static ability. Latios then gets burned by the incoming Skull from Gastrodon and falls from the combo of U turning Crobat and burn damage. Lucario then gets paralyzed by Chansey's T Wave, Ferrothorn gets rocks up, but Mandy Buzz is able to defog them away, though it gets burned in the process by Sapblade. Mega Gardevoir is able to finish Sapphire with the Hyper Voice as Crobat comes in and takes out Mandy Buzz. The Ravios strike back by taking down Electros with Typhlosion. Chansey is able to finish off the rest of the Ravios team with a combo of Counter, Softboil, and Seismic Toss. Man, this match really, really had a lot of statuses flying around. The Beach Drills recognized how fast their opponent was and made it their job to slow them down. This ultimately was a showcase for Chansey and how bulky it can be. There was a few times it got very low on health, but the Ravios just couldn't take it down. Moreover, once enough damage was dealt, Seismic Toss was enough to take care of the Ravius, a ready weakened team. 
this wasn't necessarily a bad match for the Ravias, but more of a bad matchup. Like I said, Chansey is really bulky, but the Ravias only brought in two physical attackers, in which one got burned. Once they lost their chance to do physical damage, there was very little they could do to stop the Beedros, who ended up with a 3-0 victory. Now let's take a look at this week's scoreboard. Looks like everyone got their battles done this week. Nice. On to the standings. This week's top five, we have the Colorado Avalogs, Flint Tropieces, Bavarian Beedrills, Pittsburgh Steelers, and the San Francisco Giraffe Rigs. That about sums up this week's update. Be sure to check out the league on Reddit, Twitter, YouTube, and WordPress to learn more about the league. We'll see you guys next week.